Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Inverness. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. This afternoon we are back on board with Scott Rail and we are tackling the far north line between here in Inverness and Thurso in the far north. By all accounts, it's a rather scenic journey and it's something which I've been looking forward to. But for now, let's head back up towards the station, find our platform, catch our train and I'll see you a little later on in the video. Bye for now. Hello, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to Inverness, the capital of the Highlands. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. Okay, right, before we crack on to the two lads who got off the Stagecoast bus at Doorknock, apologies, I forgot to get your names. If you drop me an email at thejoriletravels.com, I'll make sure I'll give you a mention when editing that film. Thank you very much for your support and keep watching. Okay, Inverness. Inverness is the UK's most northerly city and lies on the River Ness. It was ranked 5th out of 189 British cities for its quality of life, the highest of any Scottish city. In 2014, Inverness was described as the happiest place in Scotland and the second happiest place in the UK. This station at Inverness can be located just off Academy Street. It was opened in 1855, although the current buildings only date back as far as the late 1960s. Inverness is also the terminus of the Highland Main Line, the Aberdeen to Inverness Line, the Kyle of Lockhouse Line and today's route, the Far North Line. On entering the rather unimpressive main concourse, you'll find all the usual suspects, including large clear departure screens, a travel centre that includes a manned ticket office, a small waiting room, self-service ticket machines are dotted throughout the concourse, and a number of eateries including a WH Smith's. Inverness is also a starting point for the Caledonian Sleeper on its journey south to London Euston. Boarding was called around 15 minutes prior to departure. And this is my ride up north a rather clean looking class 158 super sprinter the last time i was on a scott rail class 158 was from kyle lockhouse to inverness and the windows were absolutely minging this time i was prepared and brought a bottle of water and a rag to clean them but to my surprise i didn't actually need them the class 158s were built by british rail engineering limited between 1989 and 1992 they have been in service since 1990. 171 are still in service and have a top speed of 90 miles an hour or 145 kilometers per hour. Once on board, there is only one class, which is standard. Seats are laid out in a two plus two configuration with both table and airline seating available. There are no seat reservations and you are free to sit where you like. I know we've covered these units on the channel before, but for completeness, I'll quickly go through the housekeeping. Legroom, as expected, is pretty tight, especially if there's somebody sitting opposite you. The tables are solid and large. Power comes in the form of two USB sockets, although there is a UK three pin socket on the other side. There's some adjustable armrests. And lastly, the seat, which was hard as nails and very, very uncomfortable, especially for a four hour journey. On walking through the coach, there is room for bikes. There are also two toilets on board. This is the standard, very cozy indeed. Everything was clean. The toilets were well stocked and well maintained and everything worked as intended. There is of course an accessible toilet in the other part of the carriage. Storage wise, there's an abundance of it. For larger items, there's space in the center and stacks at the end of the carriage. And smaller items can be placed in the racks above the seats. Okay, so the last thing to do before departure is to check out today's route.
departure from Inverness was bang on time at 1400 hours. Travel time to Thursday was just under 4 hours and we're due to arrive at 17.50 later this evening. Almost immediately the scenery is spectacular as you follow the banks of the Beaulieu Firth. which is followed by the village of Bewley itself, our first stop some 12 miles west of Inverness. Next up is the junction station of Dingwall. You can change here for services towards the Kyle of Lokalsh. Just after the station is Victoria Park, home to Ross County. Next up, we pass along the shores of the Cromarty Firth, which I don't think the birds like at all too much. the Cromarty Road Bridge carrying the A9 The train is Wi-Fi enabled, I had no problems connecting although it wasn't very fast. Onboard catering is provided in the way of a trolley service, prices I found were quite reasonable. Although it may be wise bringing your own on board just in case this service isn't available. We are now approaching Fairns, please find the gap with us.
Next up is Tain. Following departure from here, the route heads west and follows the banks of the Dornoch Firth. The route then heads northbound up to Lake before bearing east towards the coastal village of Gulsby. But for the next couple of minutes, I'll keep quiet and let you enjoy the stunning scenery. The station at Gulsby opened in 1868 and it was the northern terminus of the Sutherland Railway. The station house which sits on an unmanned platform was converted in 2002 to a four bedroom house. On leaving Gulsby, the route takes a northeastern direction up towards Helmsdale as you follow the North Sea coastline. The Far North Line opened in 1862 and was built in stages, firstly to Dingwall and then by 1874 with the help of Duke of Sutherland, the railway made it up to Derso and Wick. There are 26 stations in total, 8 of which are request stops and the entire route is single track with the occasional passing point. The Far North Line is 161 miles in length between Inverness and Wick with another 6 miles between George Smith's Junction and Thurso.
Next up is Helmsdale. After Helmsdale, the route heads inland again and northbound and it follows the banks of the River Helmsdale. The penultimate stop of the day is George Must Junction. If you're travelling onwards to Wick, you'll stop here twice on the return journey from Thurso. As we are now fast approaching our final destination of Thurso, I'll take a moment to sum this journey up, but remember, these are just my own opinions. For me, this is what train travel is all about. I've covered most routes in Scotland now on this channel, all of which have been spectacularly beautiful to say the least, and the Far North Line is no different. The route is just absolutely stunning from the moment you depart in Inverness up until arriving in Thurso. It's surrounded by scenery that, quite frankly, the camera doesn't do justice. It's just beautiful. I also hit lucky with the weather. It was a lovely day, and to think the following day, Scotland and the East Coast in particular was hit by Storm Babette, causing absolute chaos and carnage to the country. So what did this cost? The journey cost £9.50 with a rail card discount of a third. That said, even without a rail card, tickets can be picked up for under £15, which I think is excellent value for money considering the scenery you get and the length of journey that it is. There was also some onboard catering that offered hot and cold snacks, but be aware that this may not be on every service, so pack your own just to ensure you don't go thirsty or hungry. Also, the Class 158s were clean, both inside and out, and given the age of these units covering a near on four hour journey and arriving on time is kind of remarkable to say the least. So would I recommend it if you do find yourself in this part of the world, 100% absolutely. And welcome to Thurso, the UK's most northerly town. Arrival was bang on time at 17.50. With all that said brings this video an extremely pleasurable trip to an end. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and I really do hope you enjoy the video. If you are new to the channel or just haven't yet then please 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 do hit that subscribe button. But until our paths cross again do take care, stay safe, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.